Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the adventures of Arindil, who has just stepped forth from the halls of Colossus here in Elsewhere, and we will soon be moving on to the Somerset Isle in search of the Crystal Tower. But first, we'll spend a little more time here. We'll go to the closest town, Tenmar Forest. Sounds lovely. Let's check it out. You walk through the gates of Tenmar Forest, ruled by Baroness Rajan. The streets seem strangely quiet. Indeed, for we have arrived at night. This could be perilous. A larger town than I expected, and that must be the Mage's Guild. And the palace down there. Nice little place. Again, I love the fact that in this game, even the towns are appropriately large. It is obvious, whoever you are, that you are a cunning and worthy foe. Perhaps Rhea chose well, even if it was her last act. I will not insult your intelligence with further digression. My minions soon approach, but I will not consign you to the dark door of death. You have proven your worth. Once you are killed, I will raise you to fight for me as one of my servants. Give him to me now, and I offer you everlasting life. Wow. Okay. Ooh, what do we have here? What do we have here? A stone golem. We're still shielded. Now, a stone golem is something that Arendil has not yet faced. What kind of spell might they be vulnerable to? Uh, let's go ahead and try some shock. Gotcha. <laughs> that wasn't too hard at all. Come on, Jigartharn. You've got to do better than that. If you want to take down the likes of Eärendil, having read from the Ogma and Finium, and having learned much from various mages of Tamriel, having greatly increased his arcane knowledge and his combat skills, Well, let's go ahead and find an inn. Somewhere around here. We should be able to find a safe place to sleep. A nice, peaceful night. The summer night is almost as warm as the day had been, and you enter the rusty dagger, craving something cold and wet. Alright. Oh, we'll go with, uh, perhaps a bit of white wine. You finish the white wine, thankful for a safe haven. to cast my level 4 shield spell. Oh, I do have enough. Oh, nice. Okay. Six thirty in the morning.
Thank you, Innkeeper. Wonderful place you have here. And on we go. There is the rising sun in the west. Oh, we'll go ahead and save here. Ah, I still have my dagger drawn, silly me. Sometimes it's hard for Arendil to feel fully secure <laughs> after spending so much time in a dungeon. happy to be out of the summer heat. Many items of interest hang on the walls and in the display case in front of you. Farewell, good blacksmith. Now then, let's go to the Mage's Guild, get a few crystals identified. Such a lovely land this is, elsewhere. Wipe the sweat off your brow as you enter the Mage's Guild. The cool shade of the interior is a welcome sight after standing under the harsh summer sun. Around you are arcane implements and mystical apparatus. You feel a slight tingling on your skin. Interesting layout. I love the name of this village, or this town, Tenmar Forest. I wonder if that name has been used in Elder Scrolls Online. Take care, fellow wizard. We'll investigate just a few more places. The interior of Octor's general weaponry store is neat and well organized. Octor must be a popular name here in this uh, this town, this region. I think for now we can forego repairs. Farewell, Octor. Are there no mages hanging about on the exterior of this place? I was hoping to ask one of them for rumors about the Crystal Tower. Perhaps some of these folk who hang about near the Mages Guild, they might have some knowledge. Greetings, madam. I am named Renita Sakai. I am a poet, and I don't have very many friends. <laughs> well, do you happen to know where the Crystal Tower might be? Isn't that just a legend? Try the local inn. Tales are flying back and forth about something unearthed in the province of Somerset. Maybe you should check there. Well, that helps confirm our suspicions. So, 
I suppose we don't have much else to do here, do we? It's always a bit tempting to uh, explore more fully when you're kind of a completionist RPG player like myself. But I think in this case, Eirendil feels ready to continue with this quest. So we'll save here. And now we are ready to move on to Somerset Isle. But where in Somerset Isle? There we can see the dungeon of Tragerby, where we had previously ventured. We'll go ahead to one of these places that's uh, nearest to us right now. Perhaps Skywatch. 58 days of travel. You have arrived in the city-state of Skywatch in Somerset Isle Province. The date is Fredis. 11th of Frostfall, in the year 3rd Era 391. It took 58 days to reach your goal. Skywatch, northern city of Somerset, welcomes you. Enter in peace and feel our warmth. Challenge our lands and feel your blood run cold. A very interesting greeting indeed. And now Erendil once again finds himself around his fellow golden-skinned people, the High Elves. Excuse me, madam. Greetings! I am Valina Spellor, a thief. <laughs> I quite frankly steal things. Alright, great. That is some refreshing honesty. Have you heard any rumors about the Crystal Tower? There's been strange talk of Crystal Tower being near Lilandril. If the rumors are true, you may want to start searching there. Well, thank you. Good thief, Belina Spellor. Oh, I suppose we don't need any other rumors. Greetings, gentlemen. Good fellow elves. Suppose might be worth peeking into one shop or two. The pleasant autumn weather has given the practical provisions an air of joviality. You browse through cases and displays of various supplies. Only basic stuff. Good day. Another mage's guild. Greetings, fellow scholar and wizard. What can you tell me? My name, you mean? Let me see. Sarulus, Sarulus Joris. I believe, yes. I am one of the sorcerers to the court of the king. You have a question about my city state? Well, dear sorcerer, where is the crystal tower? Someone at the palace said they found something in the land room. You might try there. Excellent. We'll perhaps we'll move on there. Let's at least take a little gander at what the whole layout of this place is. Quite a large city. The proud city-state of Skywatch. Ah, they've got a nice port over there connection to the coastline, of course, of course. I'm sure there's a lot to see here, but Eirendil has important business calling for his attention. He is not merely a tourist, so we ought to move on. Where is this Lalandril that everyone speaks of?
There it is. The land drill. Welcome to the land drill, the high elven holes on the northern coasts of Somerset. The people fight here for honor and glory. Come, challenge our land, if you dare. time, even the sky is golden-colored, as the sun sets. We shall save again. Greetings. Greetings, High Elf. I'm the Landman Spilal, a typical poet, and I don't have very many friends. What is the deal with all these friendless poets? Uh, have you heard anything about the Crystal Tower? The Crystal Tower is a nexus of power known by all mages as the Crucible of Magic. You should ask the Mages Guild for any information about it, though I'd guess they would tell you little or nothing. And where is the local Mages Guild? I would check to the southeast if I were you. Thank you. Good day. Well, beautiful. I like this place already. Another large and lovely city-state. That might be the Mage's Guild there. Fantastic. Weaving among the many buildings of the city. Arendil once again feels great relief and satisfaction being back in his homeland. Back among his people. Though he does feel a oneness with all people of Tamriel as well, of course. Here we have the sun setting low. sky, gradually darkening, and here a temple, what might this temple be? Order of the Golden Tomb. of water here and there. Now let's see. Okay, I think now I want to go a little southwest. We'll go ahead and trigger the uh, swimming music. If I can actually get the jump function to work. <laughs> oh yeah, I think if my mouse is down here it won't let me jump. This game is very funny in some ways. Now the sky is red and dark. A blood red sunset. Is that perhaps a good or bad omen of some kind? Erendil is unsure. But he sees now the Mage's Guild. multiple entrances. Actually, I'm curious to see what's in here. No entrance, but just a little nook for some reason. Behind you, the fall sun sheds warmth upon the land, holding back the icy fingers of winter yet another day, 
Around you are arcane implements and mystical apparatus. You feel a strange tingling on your skin. Greetings, wizard. My name is Corin Ashlyn, and I have the dubious honor of being the law master of the Mages Guild. Word has spread that you seek the Crystal Tower. I have known students of mine to search an entire lifetime, never destined to walk within its hallowed halls. I will, however, consider doing something I would have never thought to do. I will help you find the Crystal Tower. In return, you must do a favor for me first. You see, a few nights ago, priests of the Mad God attacked our guild. They were protected by some sort of spell that absorbed our magic, making us powerless to stop them. Many of our initiates died, and the priests carried off a number of our treasured artifacts. Among these was a small diamond. I cannot speak more of this, other than to say it serves a vital purpose here in the guild by strengthening our magic. It has a secondary function as well, one that would be of interest to you. I quested and won this magical gem in fair combat from its previous master, the Debilich Zarafus. It is said that the light from the gem will allow the viewer to see the true location of the Crystal Tower on a specially prepared map. A map I have in my study. The priests, however, have the diamond. If you would consider recovering it, I would be happy to show you the location of the Crystal Tower. You will, however, have to bring me the diamond first. Do you agree? Somehow Erendil feels that he is not being told the full truth here, and something about this diamond and its power feels slightly nefarious to him. Nonetheless, he feels at this time he has little choice but to agree. Yes. Good. You will find the Temple of the Mad God outside the city of Lilandrum. Wait a moment while I get a pen and mark the location on your map. Remember, bring me the diamond, and I will show you the location of the Crystal Tower as a reward. Corim inscribes the location of the Temple of the Mad God onto your map. Okay. Well, thank you very much, fellow mage. We will be back with your diamond as soon as possible. last of the sunlight proceeds from the sky. We check our map. After we save, of course. And we see here indeed the Temple of the Mad God is not far away. Four days travel. we have entered. Already a little bit of a waterway here. Very interesting. It's kind of funny how they sometimes leave off the definite article, the Temple of Mad God. Skeletons, eh? Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of each of you. Get some fire, just for fun.
We seem to have some interesting banners or tapestries down here. What are these? Interesting image. I'm not 100% sure what this is depicting. My first thought was perhaps a coat of armor or something like that, but uh, now I'm not so certain. I mean, it could even be a strange insect of some kind. Really not sure. In any case, this is the temple of the Mad God, after all, so we shouldn't expect to understand everything we see here. We have some interesting markings on the wall. Perhaps evidence of strange spells having been cast here. A troll is regenerating. Ah. We sensed your presence before you showed yourself, troll. Your smell has preceded you. Now, which way do we want to go? About as far east as we can go, almost. Why did this open? I don't think I clicked it, huh? Oh, hello there. Why do you fight us, dear monk? Are you a monk or a priest of the mad god? How well shall I fare against you in hand to hand combat? Difficult to say. You are indeed quite agile and resilient. But I don't think you're a match for Erendil when he is well shielded and quite adept with a short blade. A mithril short blade of luck, if I am remembering correctly. Yes, Mithril Dagger of Luck. I also have my Dwarven Dagger of Strength as a backup, if need be. Wakizashi. Very cool. So we shall be facing monks here, hmm? I like the design here, the kind of brass or whatever this is here along the top of these walls. I think I might hear spiders skittering about. Oh no, actually that's probably skeletons. <laughs> I sometimes get a few of the sound effects in this game mixed up. Ah, hello skeleton. to alter. Yeah, 
if this were a dagger fall, I'd be a little bit scared to touch it. But in this game, touching most objects rarely does anything. tempting to do some pass wall shenanigans, destroy some walls, but I think for now I will resist. Just want to explore the natural layout of this place. Well, not natural, but you know what I mean. The default layout of this place as it currently exists. And we have a cauldron bubbling over there. It would be good for Erendil to recharge some of his spell points, so perhaps... He will risk resting here. What enemy is nearby? I see nothing. did recover some spell points at least. You seem to be in pretty good shape overall. I think this should be a pretty easy dungeon run. Easy but still interesting. we mustn't be overconfident. There could be a few significant challenges in here, perhaps. is this mad god that they worship here. This mad god whom they serve. Now, I should say that despite this being a world where gods and demons, Daedra, all unmistakably exist, there could also be false gods. You know, there could be gods and other supernatural beings that people believe in for one reason or another, but that do not actually exist. Or that at least uh, are not quite of the nature that they think they are. So there could be deceptions as well. Wouldn't surprise me if there were occasional trickster Degra that would try to uh, pretend to be gods for people to worship. Things like that. 
interesting how we get different uh, different uh, different types of walls and different sections of this temple area. I wonder if, strictly speaking, is the entire structure a temple or just major portions of it? Hello, Minotaur. Are you ready to chop some food? Serving up some uh, dinner for people. And there's your friend. Hi. Hello, little Minotaur. So sorry that you can't get around that corner. Oh, another one. Joke's on me. Another bullheaded chef. And we have at least one sarcophagus in here. Yikes. So they really were serving up food. I hate to imagine what was on the menu. Just a bit too high. That's too bad. I guess I might as well investigate up here just a little bit, though I don't think it's likely there are any real secrets. Yeah, sure enough. Let's go back, explore a bit more of this uh, southern portion of the temple. Seems likely to me that this area with the fancier walls. It might be the temple proper. Another sarcophagus. Ah, the hellhound. I wonder if the sarcophagus would shield us from a fire spell if we were right behind it. That hellhound basically killed itself, as they sometimes do. Their own fire magic is a bit much for their own bodies to handle sometimes. Or their own fire breath. Hello there. Arendil almost admires his own boldness in going up against a hellhound. There's naught but his dagger and a bit of magical shielding. In the past, he always would have preferred to uh, use a frost spell to end the battle more quickly. Still is generally what he will do, but uh, occasionally it's fun to just kind of face something off in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
It's always fun to see pillars here and there. Pillars or columns or whatever. Uh, stairs downwards. Interesting room here. is not in the mood for thorough exploration. So we're content to leave some of this unexplored for now. Interesting patterns here. <laughs> we can see that, ah yes, once again we have kind of a eagle motif or something like that. Down we go. More interesting patterns in these walls. Huh. Interesting design. The walls are taller as well. So like things get kind of stretched in different levels of certain dungeons. corpse there. Some other adventurer, or perhaps even the local worshipper, who was at what? The receiving end of perhaps a hellhound's fang, or, or perhaps an orc's weapon. going in so blindly. New gates here. a simple checkerboard pattern. Another monk. Let's see how he enjoys a frost spell. Not so much. Daikatana. Die meaning great or large. torch setup we have here. That might be the first time I've ever seen that in this game. I, I think so. <laughs> Don't recall ever seeing that before.
This is a strange place. chains hanging from walls. I wonder if these were uh, prisoners for a while? Hard to say. An elven helm. Some interesting treasure on some of these fallen adventurers. Or whoever they were. Perhaps just unfortunate prisoners. Worshippers of a mad god who met a strange and deadly fate. I would expect many strange and deadly things to happen among worshippers of any mad god. You'd have to be a bit mad yourself to be part of any of this. Lots of barrels and a couple of treasure chests. We have found us a bit of a storeroom. Lock was easily picked. What about this one? <laughs> It'd be a miracle if you picked this lock. Well, Avendil believes in miracles. There we go. Didn't get the satisfying click sound there, unfortunately, but hey, sometimes the sound effects just don't. Uh, happen <laughs> when they should or at the volume they should in this game. Sometimes funny little things like that happen. But, um, so yeah, let's see what's down this hallway. The mage said the priests of the Mad God took many items of value. Of course, it's a diamond that we're mainly looking for, but uh, we should keep our eye out for other interesting treasures too. of the walls to get the map filled out a bit more. Oh, hello. <laughs> Two skeletons suddenly rose from the scattered bones of this room. Okay, so that's where we came from. Now then. a worshipper of the Mad God. Or some sad victim. A 
of their strange rituals. Why so many orcs? Was this largely an orc cult? Or, like I wonder, with the worship of this mad god, was it originally a, an orc cult or was it a uh, elven cult? I mean, it is here on Somerset Isle, so that seems likely. Oh, let's uh, try and cross spell on you, why not? In any case, uh, however this cult was started, it clearly had attracted a lot of orcs to their ranks. Either that, or uh, perhaps orcs could be hired as protection, as goons, <laughs> for whatever more menial tasks they have in mind. Some of these orcs could actually be here because they are adventurers themselves, seeking treasures. They may not be on friendly terms with some of the local worshippers, some of whom might be necromancers, judging by the number of undead we're encountering here. Okay, well. This might be a safe place to rest. Our light spell. So we'll cast that again. I do like the atmosphere of dungeons being very dark, but nonetheless, it's also nice to be able to see everything upon entering a room. There you go. Okay. I want to drop a few mundane items. Picked up a mysterious potion, there it is. You see a beaker of cloudy gray fluid, the smell of bat guano. <laughs> the smell of bat guano seeping out the cork. Okay. Interesting.
Come on. There we go. Hey, Randall wonders if he really wants to know what kind of horrendous things the worshippers here might do as part of their rituals to the Mad God. It does seem most likely that these orcs are worshippers, partakers in the cult. seems important. Ah, hello there, fair monk. Attempting to kick me. How do you like uh, shock magic? Again, not much. Corpse was carrying a wakizashi. So that almost makes me wonder if that was a fallen monk. But uh, again, hard to know. Dares attack the India. Hmm. Many sarcophagi in here. Wow. A candle.
sure they are angry to have their rather unholy places of worship disturbed. But so it goes. Hello, ghost. Gone. With one shock from Ayrendil's hands. shock from Erendil's hand and you are done. We have one enchanted helm, and let's see if we can get rid of all these staves and daggers and so forth. I suppose we don't need to hold on to all the cool looking katanas and daikatanas. Tend to know that is. funny how in some of these dungeons where they stretch the tiles vertically and you get these massive looking doors. It's a detail I hadn't really noticed much until recently. And here we have coffins of a different design. Mort, it says. meaning death or dead or something along those lines in Latin, of course. But not that Latin exists in this universe, but then neither does English. So <laughs> we can simply take that as having its correlate among the languages of elves or men or other intelligent beings of this world, this universe in which Tamriel resides. Tamriel is a very interesting place. And some of the worlds beyond Tamriel that we know about... We know very little of them, but they are interesting too. Realms of Oblivion, and so forth. I do hope eventually mainline Elder Scrolls games will be willing to uh, explore other continents and worlds more fully. But, having said that, if they simply want to have deeper explorations of specific regions of Tamriel, that is perfectly fine with me too. There's still so much more. So much more to be mined from this rich fantasy world. Arendil often wonders if these are altars of some kind. Then we have these kind of nice looking pails or urns or some such. Erendil's a little bit nervous to find out what the contents might be. <laughs> Just as he's nervous to know what goes on on top of these altars.
So I'm guessing the diamond could be somewhere around here or up around here. We'll see. Hard to say. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jump over the candlestick. Okay, we don't actually have a candle here, but you get the idea. Oh. Let's go with some fire magic. Perhaps Ayrindil is lucky that whatever tools or techniques they use to nullify the magic of the Mages Guild in Lalandra, they don't seem to have with them or ready at this time. simply because Evendil is taking them somewhat unawares, sneaking in alone instead of with a large battalion. An old corpse. Yes, indeed. We have here an iron golem. Are you resistant to fire? I hope not. Hmm. Well, it survives two fire spells. I love that it has a horned helmet. <laughs> I mean, the head looks like it may have honestly just been kind of uh, borrowed from what was originally a human sprite or something like that, but it almost has a fleshy looking head there underneath that iron helm. What is the nature of this strange golem? Well, let's try a shock spell. And one more. Whew. A bit of frost, perhaps. This is a tough foe. Let's uh, use some potions of restore power. Cast a few more spells and hope for the best. I'm not super familiar with this enemy, so I don't know exactly what resistances it might have. Arendelle will resort to some dagger work here. We do have a lot of shielding. But we haven't recharged our shields in quite a while, so... I like the weapons on each hand, just kind of built in. A bit hard to tell exactly what's on that left arm. The right arm is very clear. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Almost looks like destroyed robotics underneath. I don't think that's actually what it is. But uh, it does almost look that way. And thus feels a bit reminiscent of the uh, Terminator game, which Bethesda had made not long before this one. And in fact, there's a mod to add some 
Terminator levels to this game, if I'm not mistaken, but I've never played around with that. And that Terminator game I've never actually played either, probably should one of these days. I've seen it played, and it does look pretty fun. I do like this corpse, the fact that it's still standing. Very interesting. Erendil has vanquished his first Iron Golem, but it took quite a while. So that's a bit disconcerting. We'll risk a little rest here. What enemies are nearby? Ah, hello. Back to some frost. War axe this time. Let's go west a bit more. See what we can see. Ah. Some red carpet here before this banner with the sword on it. We seem to have found an important place. Stop pestering us, monk. interesting if there were options to try to pacify an enemy or resolve combat through dialogue. There is a little bit of that in Daggerfall in the sense that there are these language skills that uh, can be just, they're just sort of automatically used around any enemy and can occasionally, if you're lucky enough, pacify an enemy. Cast a fresh Arcane Shield 4. Alright, we're almost fully healed. So that went pretty well, I'd say. Oh, who do we have here? A knife blade, I thought as much. Not too surprised to see your kind here. Let's shed a little more light on this situation. Okay. Ah, uh, rather unsavory statue here. It's a fine Nordic helm. There, resting at its floor, blood dripping down its side. What recent sacrifices have happened here? down to these depths. We finally an entrance to this mysterious room. A 
note on the floor instructs someone to move things to the secure storage area in the northeast before any meddlers arrive. Indeed, the room has been emptied, or at least almost emptied. Hmm. Expecting meddlers, eh? Well, you were not wrong. So, to the northeast I must go. That's kind of fun. I enjoy that they include little details like that. Have interesting flavor text and interesting rooms here and there in these dungeons. They really did a good job overall. I know not everyone loves this game, and that's totally understandable, but uh, there really was a lot of good work and love poured into it. It's uh, a lot better than some people give it credit for. Getting ambushed all of a sudden. Okay, Orc, you sit tight. I'm gonna drop a few things. I suppose I don't need to keep... Oh, there's no room to drop here. Great. But yeah, I don't think I need to lug that elven helm around, thinking though it is. Sure enough, my inventory is full. Let's, uh, let's see what we've got. Picked up a mark. A bracelet of luck. Arendil does actually feel a certain attachment to this elven helm. Perhaps there's something about it that makes Arendil think that this heirloom of the people of Somerset, the good people of Somerset, deserves to be returned to more rightful owners. There are definitely many varieties of both good, bad, and in-between people on the Somerset Isles, and everywhere else in Tamriel. I don't recall the full history of the Thalmor, for example. They're a rather unsavory faction among the High Elves. whether they would already exist at this time. They probably did. They probably existed at this time. Yeah, I think so. But, uh, yeah, I need to need to brush up on my, uh, my Elder Scrolls lore. I don't have everything memorized in great detail like some lore masters have. So let's see, that's where I dropped some stuff. So we'll continue east.
Arendelle's a bit impatient to get to this northeastern region. And just in case word has spread of a dangerous adventurer and interloper having entered their halls and making short work of many of the local worshippers, Arendelle feels he'd better now indulge in some wall destruction. Get through this place a little quicker. Otherwise, that diamond could end up being whisked away to some other place. I mean, I know that's not really going to happen, but, you know, it's fun to kind of role play in that way to pretend that these are possibilities that one should be concerned about. Clearly they have already removed some of their precious treasure to another room. They might try to do so again. If we are not fast enough. Let's see. might have heard the moaning of a ghost or something like that. Another enchanted plate home. Okay, something interest interesting going on there, for sure. Erendil senses that there are walls of a very different substance here, perhaps even magically protected. Walls that he will not be able to destroy. Well, so now the question is, do I go around and try to approach this area in a more natural way? I mean, it is tempting, of course, to just plow through the wall, but I want to go around to see if there's any other interesting flavor text along the way. light for now. I want to enjoy some of the darker atmosphere here at this point. Now that I'm pretty sure we already know where we're going. Let's briefly check out this room. I know I said I wasn't going to do too much thorough exploration, but Sometimes it really is hard to resist.
Now then, we are near our goal. Erendil can feel it. You can sense the power of whatever that diamond is. First we'll go south, just to see what's hanging about in here. Just some storage. Okay. Barrels of food or whatnot. Now north. A dark and foreboding room. Oh, yes, we do have some glowing eyes. Wraiths. Oh, they managed to kill themselves. With their powerful magics. That saves Arendil the trouble. area above the door is inscribed with the following. What flares up and does a lot of good, and when it dies, is just a piece of wood? What flares up and does a lot of good, and when it dies, is just a piece of wood? Well, feel free to skip ahead if you don't want this, uh, solution to the riddle solved for you, but uh, I'm pretty sure this one's uh, an easy one. Seems like, uh, you know, there could be a few different accepted answers, but one of them is likely Torch. The door moves slightly as the lock disengages. Oh, hello Wraith. Would you like a shock spell? You have found the diamond Corin Ashland sent you to recover. Only he can use it to see the Crystal Tower's location. Very nice. Hm. Now I read a little something about this room because I do occasionally do a little bit of careful research. I try to avoid any undesired spoilers. But uh, I did read a little something about this, how you can jump up here onto these high platforms and thus even get out here where you are essentially on the very edges of the defined dungeon space. See, <laughs> we're here atop the outer wall. And from here, we'll go ahead and save so I can show you. And this is my first time trying this, so I don't know if I have to do it in a special place or not. But apparently, you can step out or leap out, and there are areas you can go to. Ooh. Oh yes, this is a strange place indeed. Whoa. Did I just come back? Yes, I came back from that strange realm. Truly this is a lair of a genuine mad god. If I go out here, this time I walked instead of leaping and it seems to be a bit different. I seem to be walking on air or walking on walking on invisible ground. Beyond the reaches of the auto map. OK, 
until I get back. It seemed as if I'd gotten turned around, but was I already somehow going south after going north? So what if I go north? <laughs> Oh, this is very strange indeed. I seem to be lost in an endless space I can't make sense of, but a reload. I wonder if we try jumping again. So after jumping and looking back, I just kind of see the space differently, it seems. But yeah, going back south is the right direction. Okay. So from here, going north. Then yeah, I should be able to just go south to go back. Okay. So I'm not sure if I just somehow confused myself last time or if something strange happened, but um, in any case, uh, I read that there is out there, there's a way to kind of get to a, a sort of alternate version of this dungeon. Oh, I see some stuff down there. So I don't know if that's what I'm seeing here. Is there some way to actually get to it, or is it just that I'm seeing the dungeon in a strange way? Very odd. Very odd indeed. Well, just for fun, we'll make a lap of the whole second floor of this dungeon. Perhaps after Increasing our speed, let's see. Oh yeah, I just called it fortify speed. Hmm. Very frightening to step off into that strange space. As if this whole temple were surrounded by it. some kind of oblivion space. <laughs> As if there were magical portals on all sides or something. Who knows? Maybe just some bending or twisting of the nature of reality around the dungeon. Here, things are a bit more normal, other than the uh, invisible ground upon which we walk. What is the nature of this map god? That they could create such a space. A place of such strange physics. He or she or they, it, I don't know, some kind of powerful Daedric Lord or some other being of mysterious power. Who knows? This is quite a large space. We are now circumnavigating circumambulating. Erendil must not let his curiosity get the best of him. There could be great perils in meddling with this kind of strange magic. The strange powers of this supposed god and its worshippers. 
a banger. Oh my. So yeah, I'm not going to investigate this further. We'll call it good there. Get out of this mad place. There we go. Cast some light. And some invisibility. So we can get out of here more quickly. So that's where we want to get to. So I suppose I can justify exploring this eastern portion just slightly on our way back south. Come on. Oh my. This is an unusual sight. Strange and awful instrument of torture. Two of them. A very unsavory place indeed. Have a ghost. Hello there. You are no match for my mithril dagger. Oh. So much for you. Let's destroy some walls. Erendil would actually enjoy destroying this whole place if you have the time and energy to do so. It is entirely unsavory and unsettling. Hello, monk. Ah, you're balding a bit, aren't you? Nothing wrong with that. Or perhaps you have shaved your head. Is this the preferred hairstyle of your order? Who knows? Well, if I need to get past you, I might just need to destroy some more... destroy some more walls. Here we go. Skeleton. Lost our invisibility, let's get it back. Ah, 
sounds more like it. I think there's much more of interest to discover here. We'll take another shortcut. Oh, hello, Iron Golem. I am happy to skip any fight with the likes of you. Let's see what you look like from all angles. <laughs> Interesting fellow. Goodbye, dear monk. can't get through. And I probably can't destroy this thing. Nope. Might be good for me to rest. Did I drop this? No. Huh. It's unusual for loop piles to use that sprite. Drink some potions. It's a bit tedious to restore magic power this way, but right now, that may be our best option. And hey, we have so many of these, might as well put them to good use. Wielder of the Secret Fire. <laughs> so we'll go invisible again and destroy some walls. There we go.
Take one quick look in this room. So you hadn't done that before. Eh, nothing much of interest. Oh well. Sometimes wish I had mark and recall spells in this game, but oh well. Mildly curious about this area, but uh, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time in here. I suppose. Okay, I can only justify, since I have to travel for a while anyway, we'll go out this way just a little bit and then up and around to the northeast, where we have the exit. Silly skeleton. You pester me. Here we have an interesting kind of tombstone or monument of some kind with a sort of a cross shape. Something perhaps a bit like a Celtic cross, I'm not sure. Very interesting and very different from so many of the other items we've seen here in this place. This one's a bit more lovely, looks a bit more savory, shall we say, <laughs> compared to many of the other sarcophagi and other items we've seen throughout the two levels of this dungeon. Hello, skeleton. Yes, yes, I'll deal with you. Lots of waterways here. Maybe I could get up there, but I guess not. Ah, uh, another one. 
Are the gravestones or some other type of monument? I really wonder. Speaking of monuments, my goodness. Interesting ruins on this pillar. And here, a more unsavory looking block. <laughs> Not even sure whether to call it a statue or an abomination. Strange combination of the beautiful and the grotesque here in this place. Temple of the Mad God, indeed. Oh, the ghost. And a monk. So we found one enchanted longsword, that's nice. How dare you kick him in the behind? Lava. This was unexpected. This place definitely has a few surprises. to try to fill for the ghost, but it had nothing usable. Hmm. 
Another strange and unsettling statue. Very odd forms on this. And Rendell feels a shudder down his back, down his spine, as he gazes upon it for reasons he does not and dares not know why. labels the strange obelisk caused him so much disturbance. And then there's this room, which uh, he assumes was the, uh, the local sauna. No way to swim out here, or is there? Maybe there is. Okay, we're getting pretty close. Oh, hello. You know what? You need to chill out. Seriously. Minotaurs are only a threat in the very early game in Arena. Uh, I suppose it's a bit unfortunate. They feel a bit too easy at this point. But whatever. strange and unsettling coffin. And what have we here? Anything of interest? There should be, and yet there is not. So Erendil feels a need to break through this wall, see what secrets, if any, might lay beyond. Cannot destroy that wall. First spider of this dungeon, that is.
Okay, so we're very close to the exit now. Let's hop over just to see what, if anything, there is to see right over here. And yeah, we've already been in that space. So let's just go ahead and uh, get out of here. Just a little bit more swimming. Do it. Now back to the land drill. Welcome to the land drill, the high elven hold on the northern coasts of Somerset. The people fight here for honor and glory. Come, challenge our land if you dare. It is now eighth of sun's dusk. Tirdus. We need to find an inn. And then, tomorrow, we can return to the Mages Guild. Excuse me, madam. Looking for some company, High Elf. You can call me Lorisephana Spellfire, or Lorisephana Spellire, or anything you want. Well, have you heard any interesting rumors lately? It seems this year's harvest is going to be as good as last year's. Okay. And uh, where's the nearest inn? Without hesitation, Lorisephana Spellire asks for your map to inscribe the exact location. Thank you, madam. Arendil is a bit overcome by the beauty of this lady, but uh, not so overcome that he forgets himself <laughs> in terms of uh, how he should be spending his time right now. And who do we have here waiting in the dark but this unsavory gentleman? Uh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> uh, what would your name be? Well, I ain't a Lilandril tourist guide. I guess you can call me... Kilkemenar. Kilkemenar. <laughs> uh, Thromorin. Kilkemenar. Kilkemenar Thromorin. That is a very interesting name. Some of these names of the High Elves are a little bit hard to read, I have to say. That's me business name. Any interesting rumors? Nothing I can say. The land has been pretty quiet, actually. Alright, well, uh, thank you. Interesting part of town we have here. On this cool autumn night, the flying chasm seems especially inviting. You smell apples baking in the kitchen and look forward to your first draught of ale. And indeed, it is nice once again to be around my own countrymen. You seem like a nice enough high elf. Why don't you run along now? Ooh, I better uh, sheath my dagger. That might help people to feel a bit more at ease around me. You might find this hard to believe, but I don't want to be your friend. Wow. Why don't you move closer to the wall? That's all... <laughs> That's already plastered. I think they should have uh, spelled already differently, but in any case... The conjoined version. By the wood of Elborn, no offense, High Elf, but would you mind stepping a little upwind of me? Okay, well, uh, so much for Erendil getting a warmer welcome here in his home province. I haven't heard of any work, but the bartender is better informed than me. Okay. Leave me alone. 
<laughs> All right, fair enough. So here we are. And sure enough, we will go ahead and uh, have us a fine logger. And a single for one night. for a few hours, cast a new shield spell. Now it's 10.26 in the morning. Feeling fully rested, Erendil looks forward to uh, completing this interesting quest he's been on. finally return this elven helm to the people who rightfully should own it. The pleasant autumn weather has given unearthed sundries an air of joviality. He browse through cases and displays of various supplies. Sir. Nice to meet you, High Elf. I am Mythian Comian, or Mythian Camian, of the Order of the Golden Tomb. Can I give you some of our literature, or do you need something else? No, that will do. And you, good sir. I am Sir Ariel Spellwatch of the Order of the Golden Tomb, my child. How may a poor monk help you? Grateful to be around, balding monks were not attacking me, that's all I have to say. And here we have the Mages Guild. sun sheds warmth upon the land, holding back the icy fingers of winter yet another day. Around you are arcane implements and mystical apparatus. You feel a strange tingling on your skin. Well done, Neerendil. You have done this guild a service I will not easily forget. I thank you for your efforts. 
now for my part of the bargain. Coram walks to a table where an ornately penned map lies. There he focuses a shaft of light through the diamond. A moment later, he inscribes the location of the crystal tower, somewhere in the Somerset province, onto your map. Thank you, Lord Master Coram. Bid you good day. And I shall bid good day to all of you, my dear viewers. Thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more, and consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the drake. I would greatly appreciate that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again as I continue playing through The Elder Scrolls 1 and 2. And in the meantime, take excellent care of yourself and everyone around you. I will see you next time.